getting tons of questions of what arrow is right for me. And we have a perfect selection of three of the arrows that I've shot throughout the years. These are all arrows that I've used in tons of different applications. They are an awesome arrow and the craftsmanship to them. I know that you'll appreciate. This is exactly what I shoot and trust me, I'm not building my own arrows anymore. I walk in the shop, I get these exact arrows and I take them and shoot them. So I'm gonna walk you through the different types of arrow shafts and what the pluses and the minuses are for each one when you compare them against each other and also tell you about some of the applications. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through all these weights that I've got weighed out so I can tell you how these different configurations will all play into what weight arrow you're looking for depending on whether you're wanting just total weight and that's what you're worried about or whether you're thinking about what these different arrows might mean for speed or what these different arrows mean for how you can configure them and keep your weight virtually within the same range because all of these arrows fit within a range for an overall arrow weight that I, at my draw length and throughout my whole career, I've really loved these different arrows. I've loved the weights that they come in. I love the performance that they do down range. Um, and certainly you can change different broadheads depending on the type of animal you're going after or the type of application that you have. So the first arrow I want to talk about is the Sonic KE. Uh, this is an arrow that's really, really awesome. It's a six millimeter arrow. It's gonna come to you with a factory three fletch just like this based on a configuration um, on a machine that I worked on years ago uh, with True Flight prior to Easton buying them and taking over these pre-fletch machines. These are awesome, awesome pre-fletched arrows. They steer a broadhead really well, and I've done a couple different shooting tests where I've showed you just how awesome a factory arrow can be. Now, what I'll tell you is the Sonic KEs, the knock-on version, it's going to be a factory select. So this arrow is going to be out of select shafts from the Easton factory. Now, what's different about the KE is that it actually comes with a brass insert. And so this is gonna come with 75 grains and you can easily break it off to a 50. It's gonna be cut and glued in for you um, to the length that you require, but it's also gonna have um, an upgraded hot melt that when that goes directly in the end of the shaft, it allows you at some point if you need to, if you wanna index your broadheads, you can warm that up just a little bit and turn that broadhead and you'll be good to go. You can actually get three dozen of these Sonics for about the price of a match grade Axis or an FMJ. What I love the Sonics for is I've shot these throughout the tack season because it's a light arrow. I can break that insert off or go with a little bit even lighter insert if I want to, just specifically for like the, ta the tack events or if I wanna practice during the summer. If you're turkey hunting, if you're uh, antelope hunting and you wanna have some extra speed for some of those types of hunting situations where maybe you're not able to range constantly, especially on a turkey where you can't move a whole lot or antelope where they're very reactive, they're fast. You're looking for a fast arrow in some of the more open country style hunts where you might not be able to get a perfect range. Having that extra speed can be really awesome. And the other thing is because that shaft is so light and you're able to put that brass in the front, the FOC percentage is about 20% more on these stock uh, KEs with the full 75 grains of brass. It will be about 20% more FOC when you compare the FOC percentage to these other shafts but the Sonic is an awesome shaft. I've hunted with it almost, honestly, everything up to an elk that I can remember, I have shot with this shaft. Now, the next one I wanna talk about is the Axis. So our Axis is a match grade Axis. So honestly, all of these being selects and match grade, you're gonna have a guarantee on not just the weight for match grade, but the straightness and the spine consistency throughout the shaft. So if you roll these shafts and you spin them, they are just dead straight. In fact, the axis um, 
when this is made and also when the FMJs are made, you know, these are literally a three mile continuous arrow that come in our batches that are then cut, you know, for every piece of length of that shaft that you have. So it's literally twins all the way through. So the quality is amazing. The Axis has been so timeless for me. I love the Axis shaft. It is a great overall arrow. This is my number one overall because this arrow crosses over to what I like about an FMJ, but also it's kind of a little bit heavier than the Sonic and it's just has the durability in a four millimeter arrow instead of a five millimeter arrow. Now our pre-fletch that we would have is gonna come in a four fletch configuration just like this. I prefer the four fletch because it'll steer a magnitude of broadheads and if you have any variation in the tune of your bow to the arrow, that four fletch is gonna help that. So if you don't know if you have a perfect setting, um, this is gonna help get that arrow corrected faster and it's also gonna let you have the ability most likely to, to shoot multiple broadheads. So you might be able to have a, a, a mechanical and a fixed blade and having that four fletched the way that we configure them uh, is gonna steer really well. This Axis honestly has shot every single game animal I've ever shot up to you know literally dangerous game. Um, it just really depends on the type of point I've put on the front. If I've ever gone something bigger than a moose, then I would have a cut on impact head on this thing. And with 50 grains of brass in the front of this 300, it shoots great for me. Um, if I wanted to go with 75 in the front, personally, I would have to go to that next stiffer spine of a 250. So for me, by the time I go to the 250, and the 75, it gets a little bit too heavy for me, and I'm not really worried about that few extra percentage of FOC. So I've elected to go with the 350 grains of brass and the 100 grain point, but this is a freaking awesome, awesome overall shaft, and you can really use that anywhere you go. Now, for those of you who love an FMJ, and FMJs have so many positives to them, um, one of the things I love about them is overall their weight's heavier. They've got that aluminum sleeve over the top. They're really quiet. These are actually a much easier arrow to pull than the other two. Um, so depending on how much you're shooting, these are awesome to be able to pull out of targets, especially uh, 3D targets. I shoot these a lot in the winter time because uh, they pull easy out of my targets for indoor training. And then if I shoot a little bit colder 3D targets, these pull out really well. In the field, this thing is just a demolisher. The FMJs are heavier overall. They're a five millimeter. Again, these are all match grade. So this thing, I mean, it spins so true. It just feels like glass on my finger. I can actually, if I'm not on the label, you can't even hear that spinning because of how straight that aluminum is. So I love this. And again, our FMJs and our Axis both come with brass standard and broadhead adapter rings that are going to go over the end to encapsulate the end and help align that broadhead perfectly for you. The FMJ I've taken on elk hunts, uh, moose hunts, Honestly, anything where I'm not necessarily worried about having a little bit extra speed, these are also an arrow that I go with a lot. It'll quiet your bow down some, having that extra overall mass weight. And if you're shooting mid distance and in, you're not having to worry about that extra weight and what it's doing to your speed. So I've shot FMJs a ton for whitetails, any of that mid range to close quarter action, uh, you'll be able to have an arrow that's got a little bit more power behind it. And honestly, the FOC percentage is going to be a little bit on the lower side, depending on how you decide to configure it. But the overall weight of the arrow has just proven this thing to just ram through some serious stuff. This is the arrow that Jocko and Rogan prefer and have used pretty much exclusively. So that's the benefits of the FMJ. Now remember, with 
the axis and the FMJ, they're gonna both be internal inserts. So this will be inside of the shaft. Again, you have the option to either go with the full length 75 brass, or this can be broke off to 50 grains of brass. And these will be cut and pre-installed for you. Now, if at some point you're considering one of these and you're wanting them for a speed uh, setup specifically, uh, you can get aluminum hit inserts as well. But at that point, I feel like you're not really maximizing the benefits of these Axis and FMJs and the Sonics with the brass up front. I had custom brass made for these three types of aero shafts about 18 or 19 years ago. And then finally the market has now brought these forward. So I'm literally giving these to you exactly how I've been shooting, shooting them with these brass inserts. Now I'm going to talk about the weight differences and I'll hold this forward for you and you can screenshot it. You can take a picture. Um, I'll probably also post it too. And these are all the weights for these aero shafts, which are 29 and a half inches long from the end of the knock to the cut point. Okay. So the overall aero shaft is going to be pretty dang close to 29 inches, which I thought was a good middle ground. Now keep in mind, these weights that I'm giving you is with a hundred grains in the front of the insert. So that's a hundred grains in the front. Also keep in mind, if you want to add a lighted knock, Lighted knocks are gonna also add about 12 grains to these weights that I give you right here, okay? So first off, let's, let's talk about the Sonic 250KE. So this is what I'll personally be hunting with, although in an FMJ and an Axis with my personal arrows I'm shooting, I'm shooting the 300s because I only shoot 50 grains of brass in those two. Now, if I want a little bit more FOC, which in some applications, I will be taking the Sonics, especially where I'm having to make some of the longer distances and I'm having to range through some of that brush and stuff like that in my early season hunts. For mule deer, where they're bedded, a lot of times you can't get a perfect range. You hope to, but you might be a yard and two off just depending on where they're bedded and what you're actually able to range. So having that extra speed uh, can prove beneficial for me and it's not like an extreme large game animal so penetration is not going to be an issue. So with the 250 I put 75 grains in the front okay and so with 75 grains in the front with the 250 it's 486 grains. With the 50 grain it's going to be 461 grains. Okay now keep in mind if we added a lighted knock in there. Now this 250 with 75 in the front is almost 500 grains. So that's pretty cool. And that also gives option for those of you out there who want to shoot 150 grain head in the front of a hundred in front of a 75 grain insert. Well, this is awesome because obviously now you're over 200 in the front, but you also have an arrow that's now still in the low to mid fives for overall weight. So this is a really, really cool shaft. Now, if I did the 300 spine with 50 grains in the front instead of 75, I could still shoot this arrow and it'll spine out for me because I went with the lighter brass. Uh, but the lighter brass in the 300 is gonna be 442, for a 50 grain and 467 for the 75 grain. So you can see, you know, there's about with the 75 grain points, really, there's about a 20 grain difference, nine grains difference between a 250 with 75 and a 300 with 50. Okay. So keep that in mind. Now, sometimes and honestly, probably this fall, what you're going to see me do because I shoot a multiple assortment of broadheads throughout the year. I don't really talk about it, but I, I don't have a broadhead sponsor. I shoot a ton of different broadheads. And a lot of times when people might see footage, they assume I'm shooting a broadhead, but I'm, actually I'm not. So I like shooting a, a, a plethora of broadheads. Because of that, I will strip down my factory fletch, which honestly for the cost of the Sonics, I don't think that would be a problem for any of you out there, especially if you're wanting to play around with different fletching configurations. 
but I've actually refletched mine with the four fletch configuration with the jig that we have and I put a lighted knock in the end of my arrow. Now without the lighted knock, this four fletch 250 is 507. Okay, uh, if you put 50 grains of brass, it's 482. But at 507, now once again, you know, with, with this four fletch configuration, we're about 19 grains heavier. Then if I put a lighted knock in the end, well now I've got this arrow that's, you know, 507 plus 12. So now I've got an arrow that is a 250, four fletch, lighted knock, 75 grains of brass, 100 grain point, and this arrow is now coming in at about the same as my Axis 300 with only 50 in the front. So I've got kind of an arrow that I can almost configure to the other ones, but I can also throttle back on the inserts on those. And what is nice about the six millimeter shaft is these inserts actually can come out. You can put a point in the end, you can warm this point up and you can pull out this insert because it's in with a special kind of hot melt that we use. So what's nice about that is if you want to, you can have some 50 grainers or you can even go to an aluminum insert, which they also offer. And you can put that aluminum one in and shoot tack with like a total of, you know, right at about 116 to 120 in the front of your arrow, which will give you a ton of speed. You'll have more distance at the tack and you know, you're not really worried about penetration. In fact, the less you go in those targets, the easier it is on your body throughout the day for pulling. Okay, so let's talk about the axis. So if you get an axis, you're either gonna get the raw shafts, which will come standard with the brass inserts and the bar system, or if you do our pre-fletch, all of these are hand-fletched. None of these are automated. These are hand-fletched and they're all hand fletched on specific jigs that are matched to that particular order number. And if you order one of our jigs, all of our jigs are set to the exact same jig die as what the very first ones are that are in our pre-fletch. So if you have to re-fletch arrows and you bought one of our jigs, well, now you're going to be able to refletch any of the factory pre-fletch and get going. Otherwise, if you don't have the time, we make it easy for you. These things are fletched. You know, the vinyl is very specific vinyl. This vinyl is specific. You don't see any type of white drying marks on there. It sticks really awesome and the veins stick really well. So the difference too in veins is this is a little bit lighter vein on the Sonic. These veins are gonna be an AAE hybrid. They stick a little bit better, but the Max are definitely gonna be the ones that have the most durability. They're a little bit harder to go on, but again, we offer these in a pre-fletch. This is a killer build. I literally walk in and just grab these out of the bucket. I don't knock tune them, I don't index them. I literally just go in, grab some, tell the guys what to cut them at, and I will literally go out and go to attack or go on a hunt, and I have zero concerns that these things are gonna be spot on. So with the four fletch, factory fletch on this axis, so this axis, uh, with 50 grains of brass, which is how I personally shoot it, it's 514 grains. So if you add in that 12 grains for the lighted knock, well, and you put the bar on, well, now you're going to be right at about 530 grains, which is right where I've been hunting with probably the most, which is also why I really liked that 250 Sonic with the full 75 in the front. Uh, because it kind of gets me to that same ballpark. But that's what I love about the Axis. Um, this thing is just a durable, proven, heavy hitter. You don't have to go crazy on the FOC if you don't want to, but certainly with the 75 grains of brass in the front, you have options of what type of front weight that you choose. So uh, if you did put an aluminum insert in this particular 300 at this length, it would be 480 grains. If you put 75 grains of brass in the front of this Axis 300, uh, it would be 539 grains. Okay, so here's what happens once you go to the FMJ. Once you go to the FMJ, you want the straightness and the quietness of that aluminum, also the easy pull of the aluminum, and this thing is pretty dang robust. 
So the FMJ, if you put 75 grains in the front of this 300, it's gonna be 570 grains. So you're about 30 grains or 31 grains heavier with the FMJ than you are with the axes. So sometimes I've actually taken these these FMJs, if I want an FMJ because I want easy pull, I'll, I've built our FMJs with aluminum inserts or just the 50s, and I can kind of get them down to where that axis would be with the 75. So that's pretty cool. If I want to be able to play with both, my sight marks are very, very close. If I go with the FMJ with 50 and the Axis with 75. That's pretty cool. So the FMJ is gonna be 570 or with the, uh, with the 75 grain point or with the 50 grain point, it's gonna be 545. So, you know, you're virtually six grains off. So the way those work is your lighter inserts with the FMJs are comparable to the heavier inserts with the Axis. Lighter inserts with the axis are comparable to the heavy inserts. Uh, sorry, the yeah, you know what I mean. So that gives you a ton of options. These are incredible arrows. The process that we have demanded from Easton for these arrows really set them apart. Um, and I'm telling you, these are arrows where if you make the investment, you don't have to sit there and spend time floating these and turning knocks and all this different stuff people are talking about. If you spend money on arrows that are of assorted quality that stands above, the homework has been done for you. At this point, you can order these things, get them to your door, cut to your length, put points in them and go out and shoot tight groups. Just like you've seen me done, so many times, these are the three that I love. They all have awesome applications, and trust me, they put you right in that middle ground to where you're gonna love the speed you get, but you're also gonna love that knockdown power, and just be smart about which broadhead you put on the front of this arrow. You know, you have the option, if you're a shorter or lower poundage shooter, and you're choosing any of these arrows, listen, the builds, the weights, the FOCs, they're all going to give you killer groups. Just choose the head that's going to be better for your application. Short draw, low pounded shooter. Shoot a head that's going to be cutting on impact, going in, getting better penetration. If you're like me, you're shooting higher poundage. You've got an average to above average draw length, and you're going to be throwing down 500 grains virtually um, out of a lot of these new bows. Then you're going to be able to choose the type of expandable you want and have a great time. So. Good luck, everybody.